Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Edith Wharton once wrote, I don't believe in ghosts, but I'm afraid of them. Could it be that she's haunted by something that happened to her here in her mansion in Lenox, Massachusetts? Marge, when was the mount built? The mount was built between 1901 and 1902. And why do they call it the mount? Edith Wharton had a great grandfather who served in the Revolutionary War. Um, after the war, they gave him some land in Long Island. He built a home and called it the Mount. Okay, so it's an homage to that. Yes. Now, we're in the library. Yes. In a sense, we're surrounded by ghosts. All these great authors speaking to us from centuries ago. But this is also a place where people are really seeing and experiencing things maybe beyond our earthly realm. What's happening here? People see two people sitting in these chairs seem to be sitting in front of the fireplace reading aloud from books but no voices. And historically, who would have sat in these chairs? Edith Wharton and Henry James. Edith and her husband, Teddy, used the Mount as their summer home for many years. As Teddy sunk into a deep depression, he drowned in his own mental illness, and their marriage soon filled with strife and infidelities. This darkness in her life was reflected in her work. Edith did much of her writing from her bedroom. We think that she was working on Ethan from uh, largely during those last couple of years that they were living here in the house. And Ethan Frum really is quite a dark book, especially having to do with marriage and relationships. So for someone who claims that she didn't believe in ghosts, she seemed to have a lot of superstitions, right? And well, related. yes, I mean, we think actually her, her relationship with ghosts and the supernatural is a little complicated. You know, she was, I don't know that she ever came out and said, I believe in ghosts. Um, in fact, what she did say in her preface to the to her book of ghost stories was the question of whether you believe in ghosts really isn't a relevant question because it's not so much what you believe but what you feel and what you experience. We tell a story about Edith Wharton's uh, sort of strange habit that she had here in this room. She would place her slippers at the foot of the bed every night before she went to sleep and the slippers had to be pointed in the direction of this wall over here. And one time she was asked by someone, you know, why do you do this? And her answer was kind of strange. She said, so the hobgoblins won't watch me while I sleep. Robert, what room are we in now? So this room is called Teddy Wharton's Den. And we think that this is the room where Teddy Wharton would have spent most of his time here at the house. I understand this room is kind of a hot spot for some of the ghostly activity. What's happened in here? Well, actually, just recently on a ghost tour, I was, um, one of the things that I often say as we come into this room is that people will say that they smell the smell of cigar or pipe smoke upon entering the room. And that's usually a sign that Teddy Wharton is here and spirit is present in the room. So when we walked into the room on that particular night, um, we could smell that smell. So I, you know, kind of half jokingly said, looks like Teddy Wharton's with us tonight. And no sooner had I said that than the chair that's in the corner of the room seemed to do this little like hop because we heard like a little bump from the chair. And it was like, oh, <laughs> it seems to be getting an answer, you know? And then a few of the other people on the tour with us heard it and were kind of baffled by it too. Okay, so we're standing now on the bedroom floor of the house, right outside the Henry James suite, and we think of this as a kind of a hot spot. Uh, certainly on our ghost tour, this is a place where we spend a little time. And actually, this is a place where I myself had a strange experience. I was this just this season, actually. What happened? Well, I was giving a ghost tour. As I do, I sort of walked down into this spot here and waited for people to come up to meet me. And as I was standing here waiting, you know, in the dark, um, I suddenly felt what felt like these three little taps on my head. And then, you know, had that sort of sensation that you get sometimes that, you know, someone's like right around you. But of course, I was all alone here, you know, standing, waiting here. And it was one of those moments where I was sort of awakened again to the fact that, you know, strange experiences are, uh, are often felt here in this house. And that sensation of being tapped on the head is something that many people have reported. Marge, tell me about this photograph. This photograph was sent to us uh, from one of the people on our tour. Uh, it was about two years ago. You can see this figure here. Um, the figure was not there when the woman took the photograph. Uh, it was about two years ago. This is really cool. This isn't just like some reflective thing. I mean, and, and it happened right here, right where we're standing. Right where we're standing. And it's not a shadow yeah. because the lamp is behind her. Right. 
Marge, what happened to the mount after the Whartons left? The Whartons sold it in 1911. Then there were two private families who owned it, and then it was owned by the Fox Hollow School for Girls. And what, what kind of things happened up here? Well, we um, frequently have um, women come to visit the Mount today that actually went to school here. And they would tell us that they really believed that there was a ghost up in the cupola and they would talk to it from up those stairs. They would ask it questions and it would answer. Edith Wharton may not have believed in spirits, but they come up again and again in her life and work. She was haunted by something and that something might still be echoing here at the Mount in Lenox. You may not have believed in ghosts, Edith, but they believed in you.